welcome to 26 Minutes Dakar. We are in the 27th country in Dakar history. Welcome to Peru. In the bikes, Peru has welcomed a new wave of challenges. But where could Faraz and Aubert end up? What about the cars? Can Pellehansel grab only his second stage victory of 2012? In Dakar Discovery, we discover more of Peru thanks to a sneak peek with the Rico team. And in Dakar Legend, the theme is water again. This time, ex-champions embarrassing themselves, getting flooded out. All the news, all the action on this all-new 26 Minutes Dakar, Arika to Arequipa. Previously in the bikes, the Dakar has already crossed Argentina and Chile, and now entering Peru, it resumes a duel between Marc Coma and Cyril Dupré, the French leading, but he could have lost everything in a mud hole three days ago, and now both riders are racing equal on the most intense duel Dakar history. Jules and Mark have always been intense. We have the same machine. We're going at the same speed. 21 seconds behind Sil the Prayer. The strategy of Coma is clear. We came in a fight until the end and try and win. And that's what we'll do. We'll try until the very end. Both riders will face a decisive marathon stage during the next 48 hours. The hardest part of the rally. Will Peru give the win to Coma or to Prayer? Due to the rain, stage seven has been shortened and the bikes will now take the same mountain path as the cars in a two-part stage to Arequipa. With a time difference in Peru comes a very early start. A thing riders, mechanics and all will have to get used to for the next few days. Comet set off, second in the standings with a slim 21 second deficit to Dupre, but importantly Juan Bereda ahead. It wasn't long before the two Spaniards were riding together and then Dupre joined them quite quickly. Through this fierce river crossing, it was Coma who mastered it perfectly. Next came Dupre. He decided not to risk the unknown riverbed and dismounted his KTM. Barreda was less elegant. For Helder Rodriguez, third in the standings, it was to be even worse. Yamaha had changed his engine last night, so he was already running with a penalty, and then that engine filled with water. The state security rushed to stop him and his bike from being swept away, but it did not look good. Woody Villadoms made it through safely. And after a little bit of engineering and training, finally, the Yamaha fired and Rodriguez was once again on his way, having lost just five minutes. Ruben Farrier had chosen a different path, but he too found himself flooded out. His troubles cost him far more time, though. He ended the stage an hour down after also getting lost. It was a pretty eventful day for Paolo Consalves. The general standing showed he'd received a six-hour penalty for being towed to the finish yesterday, and so now he's well out of the top five. He also had maladies today. For De Prayer, this was a good day. He quickly caught his rivals and then matched him through the rest of the special. Significantly or not, he crossed the line one second before Coma to extend his advantage to two minutes and 22 seconds. And for sure, those seconds are going to count when it comes to the end of the rally. Mark Coma has really got to get his thinking cap on and work out how he can beat De Prayer. The two-minute seesawing really isn't enough right now, but he will start third tomorrow. Perhaps this is his chance to shine. Lo 
previsible que Cyril no recupera esa. It was predictable that Cyril would take time today. Intentándolo siempre. I'll keep on trying until the end. There are still three days, and everything will be important until then. The deal is to see if somebody can get between me and Mark. For the moment, we don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Except attacking and riding. I haven't got anything else to do, really, so we'll wait and see. Jero Farrows was the man to get in between the two riders. It had been a fantastic day for the Bordoni Ferrari team with Jordi Villadoms well ensconced in the top five positions. And Farrows managed to get second spot, having led most of the stage. Johnny Orbert was another revelation on the KTM. He was second for most of the stage. This is his first ever Dakar. He finished down in fourth position, but more importantly, right behind Mark Comer for tomorrow's marathon, the Dunes. Confirmation of the stage result, De Pre, Faraz Gill, Comer, then Orbert, with Bereda in fifth position, having started the day at the very first person on the stage. De Pre and Comer then, there's the gap, with Rodriguez still in third position, Villadom's fourth. Svitko had a very bad day riding with injury. He lies fifth. Argentine's Thomas Maffei, already a stage winner on home soil, captured a third spot on the day's special and had a great time on this very fast for the quads. Good, but not good enough to worry the rally leaders. Indeed, Alejandro Patronelli was yet again the fastest, the title holder capturing his third stage Dakar. He's flying in the overall lead. His new advantage, one hour and 20 minutes. And it looks like it's going to be a Patronelli 1-2 in Lima. Elder brother Marcus finishing second today, only 31 seconds behind his brother. Only slight bit of trouble, the river crossings. Not too much to worry for the Patronellis. Marcos waiting for his brother to get out of this spot of bother. Coming next in the cars, the battle between Hummer and Mini moves towards Peru. But who will be victorious? Comme ça, et après sortir à gauche, je crois. Montrer qu'il faut sortir à gauche. Il faut sortir à gauche. Arrondi plus. Allez, vas-y, à gauche. Gaz. Il y a une souche là. Ils auraient pu me le lire quand même. Feshfesh, also known as Guadal in South America, is the nightmare of any competitor on the Dakar. And yesterday, 
With high winds, it became spectacularly unbearable. challenge is